Evening, eight, I can't even speak today. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. It's your boy ABK. You know why I'm here. Thank you for checking out another one of my weekly Forex analysis. I really do appreciate y'all for checking this out. Um, this video is brought to you by um, Arbitrage. You guys know that Arbitrage, that's my edge in the market. That's what gives me my advantage if you will in the market that makes me profitable and so if you guys are looking at looking for something that simple as just telling you when to get in and when to get out of a trade um just go ahead and send me a dm you could also check out in the link in the bio uh if uh yeah i'll go ahead and put the link in the bio where you can check out the um facebook page for arbitrage so you can learn more about it it's a really good tool i highly suggest it for a lot of traders like anybody beginners experts whatever i just really like it and that's what gives me the edge in the market but without any of that let's go ahead and get started with this <laughs> so um i'm gonna go ahead and first of all mute you and i'm gonna mute everybody there you go and then also oh, mute participants okay i already got it cool all right so First of all, we have Monday, we have GP News at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. Wait, let me make sure first and foremost, because last time I did this. It put me, yeah, exactly. That was not the time zone that I was, it was supposed to be in. Okay, that's so weird. I hate it. I, it's funny how that did that to me last time. So anyways, we have 4 a.m. at... At 4 a.m. Central Standard Time, we have GP News where it's just going to be a, a like governor's speech, a speech basically. Um, Tuesday, we have Australian Dollar News, RBA, same thing, just like a speech basically. Um, just when those happen, I don't, unless you really live there and you actually follow up with the news like that, then you wouldn't really know exactly what they're going to be speaking of. So I just say, hey, just be aware that they're speaking and that there could be possible volatility in the market. That if they say something, might shake it up, you know. Um, USD, we do have 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. CPI News and Core CPI. So that's definitely something you want to watch out for. And we do have rate statements for Canadian dollars. So Wednesday, you really want to watch with the Canadian dollar because of the rate statements, that press conference that happens. That's what you really want to watch and see what is being said. And then that could shake up the Canadian dollar as well. So I'm going to be actually paying attention to this this week, to be honest. I want to see how if, how much this Canadian dollar, the Canadian dollar really changes like that. Because even though I'm in Canada, it's funny. I don't trade a lot of Canadian pairs. <laughs> but, all right. So Thursday, 6.45 a.m., we have Euro News. And 7.30, we have Euro News again. We have Monetary Policy Statement and Press Conference. So it's, again, same thing. That's what usually you want to watch out for is sometimes that press conference rather than with the actual news or anything else, you know? So that's what you want to watch out for. And Canadian dollar, they have basically their NFP, which is employment change and unemployment rate. So again, want to see how this is going to turn out. It's going to be quite interesting to see because look, they were negative 212 right here. So going to see what's up with that. Yo, what's going on, Peyton? What's going on, my dude? How you doing, brother? All right, so let's go ahead and get out of that and go ahead and get over to the DXY. Ooh, so, yeah, this DXY move, man. Look at that. Look at this weekly candle. Bullish. Destroy this downtrend. Now, like I, like I mentioned last week, I was saying that I wanted... Um, I wanted the DXY to, if it's going to break out, which I was expecting that it was going to do, although I was still trying to go against it. I'm not going to front. I was still trying to go against it. I was trying to see what it was going to do, and then it broke out to the upside. Now I want to see this retest before I see a continuation to to continue, you know? But it really did break this, this bear structure, and now I'm looking for bullish moves, and I love to see it. Really, really love to see it. So, first of all, let's go ahead and get rid of this trend line real quick. And I want to go down to the daily time frame. And just to put this into perspective and just for future notes for myself, price did indeed on the daily time frame break up to the upside, came in retest, hit 78.6 nicely, and then continued to the upside. That's 
That's clean. That's hella clean right there. That's that's textbook. Anyways, um, so daily time frame again, guys. I just really need to see a push to the downside a continuation. Let me actually hide this. Go on to the four hour time frame. See what the price did. Yeesh. Yeah, I like this for a definite retest for sure. And kind of, I would really want to see it. Yeah, come in like to the ninety one point one one zero area. Let me see this real quick. So it came down. Pushed up, came lower. Yep. Okay. I would rather see that on a lower time frame because I think that would be a better way to see that white off. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely clean. Push price pushed up, then came lower. Okay, that's clean right there. Anyways, sorry, I just wanted, I just trying to get better at um, using Wyckoff theory. But anyways, so what I really want to see on the one hour time frame is for price to really just that is the wrong indicator. Is for price to really push to the upside, what well, as it already has. Maybe make a double, make it, maybe make a double top or something like that, and then push down to like I really like ninety one point two eight one rather than ninety one point three six eight for me personally, and then I want to see price just continue to the upside because that is a more accurate reading than just me saying that oh I just want to see the retest and continuation. Although that is what I want to see. So, so yeah, that's what I have for the DXY. I don't really have much more to say about that really and then let's go over to arbitrage oh hold on before i go over here i'm going to place a alert over here at 91 point three six eight Oops, I did not want that. Gonna go ahead and set an alert there for it to get hit. And what I really wanna, I, I really don't wanna see price just continue to the upside because then it won't give me an entry on any of the USD related pairs until I see a retracement. That's just how I am. But let's see what arbitrage has for me. Because RBA be giving me some interesting entries that be playing out like Crazy. I'm just looking. <laughs> 15 minute already calling for a, a sell. Although, yes, there was a gap in the market. All price really needs to do is kind of just push a little higher to the upside. And let me see what this this closed as. 91.982. So price has to come back up all the way over here. And then it, for it to close down for me to say that, okay, this is closed the gap. Which I can still see the the sell possibly happening so hey like i said i'm really looking for that downside move um a safer a safer bet for usd related pairs that i would look for is for the one hour time frame for it to really give out that breakout to the downside a retest Ooh, that is why that makes so much sense sorry a retest to the upside and then a continuation to the downside that's what I would kind of look out for for the DXY on the one hour arbitrage time frame. Well, let's see what four hour has. Yep. If it could come and retest this and then continue to the upside, that would be absolutely perfect. Daily time frame called for the sell. I mean, the buy on Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, continue to the upside. Yeah. Weekly time frame. Mm, yeah, for, for price to continue going on, which I do like the possibility of price going bullish, it really does have a point of price where it can't root. I don't really think it's just going to take off from right here. And especially with the whole stimulus news and stuff like that, the markets can move any type of different way. So I'm really looking to see what this one hour time frame is going to do. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is place. Well, actually, because I don't really care for placing... Um, DXY arbitrage alerts because I'm not really trading it rather save my alerts for things that I'm actually trading so let's go ahead and go over to first of all clear all this out except for gold it's going over to euro USD took a fat L twice on <laughs> euro USD oh man this was way too fast I I was over here thinking this was a sniper little did I know 
and if he was gonna destroy me. <laughs> that was funny. But anyways, ooh. Yes, get out of here. But anyways, so kind of, I mean, it speaks for itself, right? Rita's continuation to the downside. Cause when price was over here, I was like, okay, maybe, wait, let me even see if I deleted the arrow or if it's still here. Okay, so first of all, that's clean. Okay, push up. That didn't play out actually. That was terrible. <laughs> okay, no, I don't have the the arrow that I thought I would I had that was pointing down. But yeah, basically like the same like it's just the same thing. Just retest of this major zone that price broke out of. And then a continuation to the downside. I would definitely like the likes of like 1.19600 to get hit. Um, let me actually go to the daily time frame real quick. See something. Yeah. Ooh, I do not like these four hour candles. I am not liking how the four hour candles looking, but uh, nonetheless, get rid of all this too hold up give me one second hello oh, okay never mind <laughs> all right so your USD I still want to see this push to the upside I'm not liking how those four hour candles are looking but I mean, basically, this is what I kind of—I really gonna have to really see 1.200 to get retested, rather than just trying to take the sell from right here. Cause I do see the structure, but just the way how this dropped down. I mean, realistically speaking, I should put this up here, to be quite honest, because price just dropped and there's so much trading that didn't ha that has to be happened up over here so i kind of am gonna wait and see what euro usd does um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play with this push to the upside then it drop i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play that out i don't like it i'd rather if price does get over here and drop hey i missed the move i'm totally fine with that but i definitely do not want to play this i'd rather play something like this out it's my it's more of my style it's more of what i'll play i'm pretty sure that you can probably get some type of opportunity when price comes back up here to take it to a downside but for like is that for me personally that's how this is how i have to take it meta from from the high to the low higher low lower low i need a higher low to get another lower low at least if it stops right here, it's all right. I'll take the L. Well, it's not an L, but I won't just get into it. Now, one hour time frame arbitrage. Again, it's setting up for the buy. I already know that the 15 minute is starting to set up for a buy or it's already calling for a buy. So I really do want to see what your USD is going to do. But I definitely, definitely like the buy play for it to push to the upside. And again, I do want to see it come oops, and hit. 1.20492 right before I get that drop. That's actually going to be my alert. Oh, what am I doing? Alert, URUSD, crossing there, and I'm going to have it as 71 per fib, sell entry. Then we'll see what price does. And then arbitrage, again, I have. The one hour time frame setting up. I'm gonna go ahead and set this long, then create. All right, so let's see what that does, and then we'll be chilling. All right, going over to GPUSD.
All right, so <laughs> GU might really play my life here. Hi, Bailey. Oh, well, she was standing at the door. Okay, oh, he's going right now? Yeah. Okay, for sure. Hi, Bailey. I will definitely check out SPS 500 for you. Very, my bad. I'm just seeing your message. I'll check it out. It's, that's what I check out usually towards the end. Um, GUP USD. I still have my alert set right here, <laughs> right here at um, 1.37600. If price doesn't come down here and hit that, I would be laughing because it is at the 60. It is rejecting off of the 61.8. And again, for those of you who who see my trading style very often you would see that i usually will say that hey you could stack your positions you could place 0.3 percent of your trade right here you could place another 0.3 percent of your trade but i am kind of still looking for buys on gu until it really like i said it really needs to break structure for me in order for me to say that i'm gonna sell this so but that kind of goes against what I'm seeing, oops, no, not that. What I'm saying, what I'm seeing on the um, US dollar. So it's kind of interesting to see. But overall, I gotta see this structure get broken right here. Before I really start to think about selling GDP USD. Regular, regular. Going over to the weekly time frame real quick. Because even right here, you can see that prices used this as a resistance before. You can so that's why I'm just like, okay, it's a it's a huge. Well, yeah, not I would say huge because from the last time over here back in 2018 when it was hitting these, last time it touched this was back in 2009, and then before that 2001. And TradingView doesn't have more information from the past, obviously, but still. Regardless of that, that's what I'm saying. This is a huge, um, this is a huge demand zone at this time. But of course, if it drops, if it pops lower than it, then it becomes a supply zone, right? So again, I'm still looking for my entry at 1.37600. I'm still looking for that. And again, the same thing as with your USD. If I don't get that entry, then I'll be chilling because I also have arbitrage over here setting up for a buy position that I like. So I'm going to go ahead and set up that alert as well. Got a lot of setups. Got a lot of setups apparently. <laughs> NFP week. NFP had one of those weeks, man. So, yeah, long entrance, create. See what it gives me later on today. But like I said, definitely want this to play out more than the arbitrage entry but if i get the arbitrage entry i'll take it too right um let me actually see what gpu is these looking at on the higher time frames four hours still very bearish daily time frame hasn't called for a sell quite yet so this is another reason this gives me another reason to not even try to sell um gpu usd because look what it's done in the past right here boom bounced off of bounced off of the rsi line and then went made, when it made a higher high bounced off the rsi line again made a higher high bounced off the rsi line again made a higher high bounced off the rsi line again made a higher high i need to see this close under this rsi line for me to be like all right now i could think about i could start thinking about selling but until then i can't do it and even the indicators right here the level pro and the arbitrage Z are showing that it's not looking to sell. So I am still bullish on this regardless. I'll still love this wick. I would love if price came in with this. That'd be amazing. So let's see what GPU USD has for us as well. I'm gonna be watching these. And I still have my buy entry on, I still have my buy on um, AED USD. I actually got in a little right here. I got in right before the market closed last week in the negative and I was like, all right, I'm chilling. But so I am still looking, this is actually still a good, very good entry for a possible AED USD buy. Because again, same thing as with the, um, with AED USD, 
until price breaks this i mean gpusd until price price breaks this demand zone at 0 0.75834 and 0 0.75100 basically i can't look to sell AUD USD. it's just been way too bullish and i need to see structures being broken before i think about that you know so and i'm pretty sure a lot of people would agree with me as well and i like this wick that um this daily candle left i love seeing that so again i still want to see this push to the upside and i got in right here still i got it at the negative so if you would like to get into this trade as well be my guest watch this be watch this be like one of the few times that ad usd is like no i'm actually gonna sell and i'll be like wow so all those times you were just playing my life huh and it's like yep but anyways what I'm looking at for, why can I not extend this? Do I have the, no I don't, that's weird. Anyways, regardless, I'm looking to take this price. Oh, but now I can move it. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I'm looking to take GBP, I mean AUD USD to the upside. So maybe even I kind of just want to take it realistically to this um, this next su the supply zone. That's person. That's what I want to personally take it to. But I do possibly still see see it going to the upside until it breaks this structure. It could even take me out of this trade because I wouldn't want to take losses all the way down here because I can I could still possibly see a liquidity grab down here. I can still see it. So this is definitely a possibility for um, my trade to literally price just literally, literally wake me out and then price go to the upside, but this is what I'm trading. So again, until I start really seeing some structure getting broken on the higher time frames, I can't say that AED USD is bullish. Same thing, I mean bearish, and same thing as um, Euro, I mean GP USD and well, your USD is basically bearish. <laughs> so, all right. GPAUD, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, this was a stop button. And it's unfortunate because we did, we did what, we did go ahead and get price clean over here. I was saying it, I was like, you would really want to put your stop loss at break even over here. But I was saying that I still think that price is going to come back and it might come back at our entry. So, I was, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna take my partials here and I'll see what price still does. And it still has the opportunity to still drop. There's nothing really saying that it can't still drop. Like the same setup that I had from last week, it still is valid. But you wanna sit, take a look at this at the four hour time frame, which I'm really, I was saying that I was gonna hedge it. I was saying I was gonna hedge it, but I didn't hedge it. And that irked me. Push to the upside. Where did it come to? You, as per usual, the buy box, and it was pretty nice. Off of the seventy-one percent, I would have had zero drawdown off of this, and I would have definitely taken like at least eighty percent profits already. But anyways, I still think that this was a stop point, and I still think that price is gonna drop. Let me check out the volume. What happened with this play? Yeah, with this big volume off of this candle right here, I think this is gonna drop. This is on, on the four hour as well. Let's go into the one hour time frame and see what the candle was. I really had the biggest volume. This one, and it was. Let me go ahead and actually zoom in to take a a better look. I have not seen that in a while. If anybody cannot hear me well, please let me know or anything like that. Mm, so ew. this candle, this bullish candle right here, this is the candle that had the big, the most volume on Friday, but yet price was dropping. So that's very interesting to see right there. And the candle right next to it had just, just as much, just as much volume with that with to the upside. That's exactly why I say, I think that we just got stopped on it because I don't think price is going to come back up here. So if it does come back, hey, maybe I'll get an entry at the trend line and we'll see what happens from there. But other than that, I think I got stop on it. And all I could really see at this point is for a possible entry. 
right there. So price push to the downside. I don't even like this. I don't even care for it whatsoever. But this would be the only way that I could get into a sale at this point. So for a price to come back up to like basically 1.800 and then I get into the sell. But other than that, I really want, I'm going to not, I'm not going to delete this. I'm going to hide it because I want to see how this end, ends up playing out. So that's, again, did I just, I don't really care for this entry anyway. So I'm not going to play that out. I'm just going to wait and see if it does it. Then I'll be like, okay, cool. Awesome. Um, what was I doing over here? Oh yeah. Weekly time frame. This is what I, oh, that's how the weekly closed. Disregard everything I just said. That's how the weekly closed. Hold on. If that's how the weekly closed, then I can't say in good faith that I'm gonna. Oh, price is gonna go bullish. I can't say in good faith that this is good. Oh, and I was. Like again, and I had the buy right there with looking like that. No, I can't say in good conscience that that's gonna sell. <laughs> I'm gonna wait and see what it does. And I might actually wait for this weekly arbitrage, like I said, because I, re I really have been looking for this <laughs> bullish move to happen because I wanna get into another position trade. Oh man, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to wait for this move to play out, so yeah. Four hour time frame, what's it looking like? Yeah, even the four hours bullish, man. One hour, barely calling for a sell. I mean, I could play this for the short term. Why not? But that's as far as I could take it. If I can get this retest, then sure, I'll take this sell and we'll see what happens from there. So I'm just gonna say, give me the retest of the RSI line continue anyway all right so we'll see how that plays out for ga but personally speaking if AUD usd is going to go bullish all i see is gp AUD going bearish because they just let me go over here let's get a fresh gp AUD chart oh uh, i played myself <laughs> again I stayed doing that anyways move charts I don't know what I was doing over here um, and let me get a comparison going on so AUD USD so anybody notice anything let me take the let me put this in candlesticks actually candles does anybody notice anything different Except for this wick was way bigger than this one, but still, regardless, they're literally going the opposite way of each other. Literally. Every step of the way going off, well, yeah, basically every step of the way going opposite of each other. So if AUD USD is going to go bullish, then I can't go, I, can't, I have to go bearish with GP AUD. So, I, like I said, I've already missed my entry. For this and that's basically the entry that I got on AUD USD but yeah look at like again it's just AUD USD for this and that's basically the entry that I got on AUD USD but yeah look at like again it's just AUD USD moves much it doesn't move much more than GP AUD because GA gives you more pips but it's just they pay out differently you know so that's the reason why if I have to look for I have to look for sales on GA, but arbitrage weekly is telling me otherwise. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I feel like I'm looking a little too chill over there. <laughs> All right, let's go on over to, oh yeah, GA definitely watching you for that sell, because that sell could play out very nicely. And even if it doesn't play out overall, I'm still gonna look and see what that's gonna do. All right, so your AUD. This weekly time frame 
is, I mean, well, this weekly, um, first of all, let me fix it, because it looks like it's not even correct. I hate that I use Shrine sometimes, but it just be like that. All right, there you go. Yeah, I gotta play it like that. Yep, so let me hide this real quick. All right, so on the weekly time frame, we can see that this is clearly respecting this trend line. And <laughs> that's so funny to me how it is respecting that. Um, so, but on the daily, me seeing this candlestick right here is telling me completely otherwise. So what I'm really trying to see is what is what is EA really going to do? Because kind of the same thing as with, um, with GP, AUD, and... An AD USD. Let me take the compare tool. Now I'm not 100% sure if it's quite the same. I think it's actually very quite similar. Yeah, same thing basically, right? This is. Let me put it in candlestick once more. All right. Oops, I am going to the wrong place. Candles. Okay. But yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's like it's really quite like it's just inverse it's kind of like the dxy and um it's kind of like the dxy and euro usd it's just inverse so same thing with ea i kind of have to be i want to be i want to be bullish on it because it is showing that it could be bullish but i have to be i have to be bearish on it until i see some structure broken you know so i'm gonna go ahead and remove that and go on back over to EA, this daily, this daily candlestick right here is telling me that this is gonna keep falling. So that's another thing, right? Four hour time frame. If I were really looking to sell this, the only way that I could sell it is if price came. Ah, oh, never mind. Because it came to the sixty one point eight and then popped up, but then again, it hit this, it hit this supply, the supply zone and it rejected off of it with the very hard, even the four hour candlestick, man. And let me put a volume on it as well. Yeah, the volume is right after, it picked up right after it and then it kept dropping. Yeah, no, I gotta, I gotta kind of still be so bearish on this. Oh my goodness, my dog's being a dork. Bailey. Hey, come here. Sit. Hey, come here, sit. You don't listen when people are here. <laughs> Anyways. I kind of have to be bearish on this. So uh, let me see what arbitrage has. So I can have a better... I mean, weekly, obviously, I know that it's way bearish. Oh my goodness, dude. Imagine catching it from this cell. With obviously, the retest. This is what is what I'd always look for, no matter what. If I miss it, it is what it is. Imagine catching oh my goodness 1417 pips in a matter of how long oh it doesn't tell you that how many days huh never mind hold on i want to see how many days this is so from here that's a 8.70 percent decrease in 133 days that's not even a whole year and you could have just placed one trade and then you would have been chilling. That's crazy. But anyways, daily time frame. It might be starting to set up for a buy. I'm still watching this. I'm still really watching this. And again, if price starts to break these, um, these structures, then I'm definitely going to start being bullish on them. Four hour time frame, setting up for, well, it's already called for a sell. Dang. <coughs> Who would have thought that this would have played out? Cause it never caught for the exit. One hour time frame is just barely. No, I don't even like how that looks. I can't get an entry on this yet. So, then I'll wait and have, gonna have to wait and see what your AUD does. But I'm definitely bearish on it. Cause this is all I see. All I see is making it lower, making lower lows. There's nothing that's telling me that oh, a, your AUD is getting ready to turn around. Oh, because it gave two two days worth of bullishness like no so we'll see how your AUD plays out 
not really on my watch list, but I'll put it on the yellow, like, eh, watch for it. <sighs> Sometimes I really have bad luck with my really good entries. So, first and foremost, oh, it's coming back. Hold on, never mind. I was talking mad mess about what I was just saying. Never mind, y'all. So, I'm still looking for this entry on your GV on 0 0.861 I mean 0 0.85933 I'm that's where I'm really looking for a buy entry I would love for price to come and sweep down liquidity and just keep going to the upside because overall I'm I'm starting to be bullish on your GDP I do like how it did come and break through this um, demand zone and now it's starting to like show us like rejections over here. So that could be a possible liquidity that is trying to grab on a higher time frame, like a high, on a higher scale for it to continue pushing to the upside. But it's kind of like with GPUSD is that I'm, I'm really looking for price to just drop down a little more, grab some liquidity, make traders still think that, okay, these are just gonna keep dropping like euro gb keep dropping but then keep pushing to the upside so still waiting to see what this does but i don't like how i go i'm trying to like if i'm trying to buy this i'm i can't try to buy gp usd either because and i'm dropping a lot of gems on here today because i don't know how many people know about this stuff no wrong thing let's do the compare tool again GBP USD. Notice anything? Yeah, I'm dropping gems out here. I hope y'all are taking notes. <laughs> Notice anything? So, if you're buying your GBP, you have to be selling GBP USD. So, this is what kind of makes me question this GBP USD buy that I'm looking at. Because... It can go either way, and your GBP has been very bearish, very bearish for how many weeks now? Look, same thing on the higher on the higher scale, basically the same thing. So I was like, gotta watch out. So what I'm really watching to see is what's gonna happen. What's going to play out first, because it's kind of interesting how GBP USD looks like this. Hold on. I'm going to have to restart that. Oops, I did not mean to. Stop share real quick. There we go. Then unmute themselves. Mute all. Let me invite these guys real quick again. My bad, everybody. Give me a second. Discord. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so GU, like I said, it's kind of interesting how GU is kind of doing the same thing. It came to the 61.8 and it looks like it's going bullish. And then your GP is kind of doing the same thing, but your GP, it would look nicer if this plays out versus. If GPUSD plays out, I would rather GPUSD honestly go bearish 
to like match up with the DXY and stuff like that. But we'll see what happens because I actually like playing GP USD more than your GP. So, oh, I forgot. I need to go to arbitrage. So, 15 minute time frame. It looks like arbitrage might be setting up for a 15 minute buy on your GP, but I'm not playing that. Um, and this is interesting because this looks like it's literally 10 seconds away from calling a, a sell. So, yeah, I'm going to leave your GP alone because the four hour time frame, bearish, break, retest, continuation to the downside is per usual. Daily time frame, very much bearish. So, to say that your GP is going to buy. I like how it's right here at the lower danger zone, but again, just to say that it's gonna buy, dang, this is crazy. Called for the the sell right here. It retested. I would, let's just say I would have got in right here. I want to see how many days this would have been. Let's just say from right here to down here. That is 49 days, not even two months. Yeesh. That is a crazy drop. 412 pips. Doesn't sound like a lot, but on your GP, that is a lot. So, but yeah, overall, it's very bearish. So, to say that GP USD is going to buy, that might be the most likelihood rather than your GP buying. But we'll see how things play out, you know? Who knows? I definitely like this, this buy, though, for a potential reversal, but that will be a reversal. Versus a GPUSD, this is for a potential continuation. I'd rather play a continuation than a reversal. Because reversals are just much more mis riskier. So, but again, we'll see what this does. I'm not really caring for it, so I'm just going to yellow it. Euro NZD, I'm still in this trade, still in profit. But I am kind of skeptical about how it looks like this is breaking and retesting this this um, this trend line right here. I am skeptical about it, but I did I did say that I want to look for sales all in here. And although price did go a little higher than I would have wanted it to, oops, sell offs. Although it did go up a little higher than I wanted it to, price did is still in the dropping but again for it retesting right here i really want to see what it does i did get out though i did get out honestly speaking did get out i think wait let me see now <laughs> i want to see because i've just been not trading or not looking at my phone that much on trades but yeah i'm out of the trade i got out of the trade i was like i'm gonna wait and see what happens with this trend line with this trend line break and so price did break this trend line want to see if it's going to retest or continue again continue to the upside because it is on a lower time frame buy but obviously speaking like daily time frame it's just like euro nzd like i'm kind of actually dumb trying to sell this i mean trying to get out of it based off of this because look at the daily time frame weekly time frame looks just oh that looks like a doji so hey this might be a sign to for uh a reversal because look at the, the candlestick right before it dropped heavy so we'll see what what what's real good we'll see what's up but i think that price is going to come back down because this is all i see just like with um just like with euro AUD, this is all i really see so we'll see what's good i'm watching it but unfortunately i'm not in the trade 15 minute time frame, calling for setting up for a buy, but I don't want to play. I don't like playing 15 minutes like that. One hour, and that would not have been a setup I would have played at all. I keep forgetting to get rid of that. Four hour time frame, looks like it might be starting to set up for a sell, but I don't like playing these type of sells, personally speaking. But the daily time frame, Yes, rejected off of this hard. I'm expecting a lower low, to be quite honest. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna look for buys on Euro NZD until I start seeing some some other stuff, you know. So let's see what goes on with Euro NZD. 
And if I got out early and this is about to drop, then I played myself extra hard. All right, GPJPY. I'm so glad I did not get into this cell because I would have taken an easy L. I'm glad I was patient with it and waiting because now what I really want to see is this move right here play out because that's all I kind of do see with this for our candle stop hunt to the upside double top grab liquidity just go over here to the weekly time frame grabbed all this liquidity up here not even all of it but let me put on this Oh man, it still has a long way that it could go, yeesh. No, I'm not looking at that at all. <laughs> That's just crazy talk. But anyways, I mean, it's not crazy talk because it's definitely possible. But I'm definitely expecting a drop on GJ of sorts, which again, that makes me not want to sell GPUSD because GPJPY and GPUSD do move pretty similarly, but this is extremely bullish. So, so even to say that this is gonna drop that's kind of premature of me. So what I would kind of really suggest personally is if you're looking for buys, I mean, you could really set a buy stop. Let me see. This is dangerous, very dangerous, but you could really set a buy stop right here at 150.419. Because this is, like I said, this is extremely bullish. So it's kind of like. You put a buy stop. Put your stop loss right there. And really start. I mean, still really keep taking GPJPY to the upside. Because I don't really see a reason why you wouldn't at this point. Because it's just really bullish. I mean, again, I do see. That that could be the stop hunt, but on the on the weekly time frame, that doesn't that's not at what it is at all. It's just like, man, you better wait. I'm gonna keep going. So, but this could be again a, the liquidity grab for these lows right here, and I would still love to see this get retested for a continuation to the upside. But again, GPJPY is just ridiculously bullish. I would set a, I would set a buy stop right here personally and see how that plays out. Um, one hour time frame was calling for a sell, but it looks like it's about to turn to a buy. And look what happened right here. This called for a sell. You did, you did, you would have got paid out a little bit, but then it went to call for that buy. You would have paid, got paid out a lot. So this looks like it's doing something very similar. So again, I would rather set a buy stop for this because this looks like it's just going to keep going to the upside. Um, and of course, four hour time frame bullish. Can, like, dang, that would have been a good buy to get in right there. And I do remember that we got into a GPGPY buy last week, which played out nicely. Um, and yikes. This is why I say break retest. I mean, although this would have kind of faked you out, but still. Anyways. Let's go ahead and go over to you, Chef. Yeah, I'm watching this for sure for that buy stop. <clears throat> you chef man I took another L on it but it is what it is you know it is that's just like again this is why once that 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 trend line broke I was like okay if you want you go ahead and step out of the trade and if you stayed in the trade well then it is what it is you took the L with me so I like where price came back up to I like how it came back up to this high. I don't even know what it's gonna do here because if it does break this structure then it's definitely gonna go bullish but all i really see at this point in time especially with how price has just been climbing and climbing is a liquid is a stop hunt drop down maybe even come down to these lows right here and then continue to the upside that's what i kind of see happening let me draw out a fib on this move see how that looks yeah, that's perfect. Oh, that's cash. 
that is super cash money right there but that is if it does happen i don't know if it is we will only have to wait and see but again if price hey guys if price does end up pushing to the upside dropping then yeah take me to the upside this bullish play that happened over here that looks very similar to it very similar to it in fact that's exactly what i'm basing it off of got the push to the upside price dropped down to this area continue to the upside so i want to see it again again you just look for the same thing over and over again and it happens right so i am looking for buys here so let's see what you chef does i really like this top hunt to the upside right here I really like it because it could just be the liquidity grab. So I'm watching you, Chef, seeing what it does. Mr. Tacos. Ooh, dang, this has been, you've been going to work too, huh? Okay. I see you. All right, so let's see. I was saying personally that I wanted to see that retest of right here because, again, you just do the watch for the same thing over and over again. 61%. Oh, this still hurts to see. Oh, this would have been perfect if it would have came down lower. It would have been perfect. Oh, take profit at every... Anyways, let me stop. What I really want to see, kind of the same thing on you, Chef, is... I mean, you, Chef, on USD Mexican is for me to clone this real quick and I want to see price really come up and grab some liquidity like how I did over here I hate it how my dollar signs are like huge but still it's because I'm, like, I'm all about that big money <laughs> but I want to see price really stop out some traders because now retail traders are gonna look to sell here right I will I, well, Kinda, I kind of would too, but I want to wait for that push to the upside and then a drop. And then for price to stop right here and then push to the upside. Let's see how that looks right here with this fib. Cash money. So let's see how things play out, but this is what I want to see on USD Mexican overall. I don't care what the lower time frames really do look like i mean i if i go look maybe i can find a potential sell entry but overall this is what i want to i want to see i want to see that stop hunt to the upside first so i'm just gonna wait for that to happen first so um hide this i'm gonna leave this nice perfect beautiful picasso drawing right here and i'm just gonna be watching it <clears throat> not that um, let's go over to arbitrage. See what Arby has for me. Oh, hold on. Before I continue, I am recording good. Okay. So, um, USD Mexican. Looking for sell opportunities, definitely. I like that on the arbitrage. That's why I usually like doing for my retracements. I like looking for arbitrage setups. So if I can get that breakout, retest continuation, that'd be cash. And then naturally, let's see where the where this actually would TP at. At 20.82485. Not necessarily where I would let me clone this or copy actually and then paste it not necessarily what I would look to um, where I would look to look for like an entry but still it's not bad because I mean I could see and this is a, a possibility where some retail traders can get stopped out because look at that. It actually does match up with the continuation to the upside if price were to stop right here. So we'll see what it, what it does. But overall, I would look for this sell opportunity to possibly happen tonight. So definitely watching USD Mexican for a possible sell. All right. 
Let's look at Mr. Gold. First and foremost, I still want my retest before I look for another cell entry on gold. That's not gonna change for me. Um, four hour time frame, I did call for a sell. I mean, for a buy on gold. I was noticing that price was holding at this structure. And then during NFP hours, price did this very interesting play where it did a stop and where it looked like it was gonna drop some more, but it didn't. And so I said, hey, I'm actually gonna get into a buy right here, into a buy right here. And then I saw that price was going up higher, but it didn't necessarily go, it didn't necessarily stay up here, so it dropped lower. And I said, okay, I'm gonna get into another entry over here at 1693. And so right now prices, I'm in profit in this trade. So I'm gonna actually put this 1693.340, that's fine. My stop loss for this entry is at break even, but for the first entry that I gave, it is not. So I'm gonna just have that still chill in there and I still wanna see this retest, like I said. Um, a good take profit area would actually be a right here. You'd wanna take some of your partials actually. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Oh, well, I'll do it after this. You would wanna look for take, take partials right there. Um, Another good part, take partial area will be 1725. And then if you're gonna really hold your trade all the way, then yeah, just let it let it play out from the rest of there. <clears throat> but price can definitely really hold right here and then continue making lower lows. Cause that's all gold has been doing is making lower lows. But I still wanna see this retracement right here. And based off of how um, price played out on NFP, I do see price pushing up to the upside and also who knows maybe the COVID stimulus thing that's going on who knows maybe it'll make price push to the upside right but I'm personally bullish on on gold I like how the one hour time frame is very is calling for buys on gold as well um and then the retest would be nice then a continuation to the upside would be even better so if I can get this retest right here, hey, maybe those who weren't able to get into the trade can find a way into it. Um, the four hour time frame is definitely still bearish. The daily time frame, <laughs> forget about it. Let's see what the weekly is looking like. So the weekly is broken through the mean line. So this has really no hope of coming back to the trend. The, well, not really no hope, but I really do see gold still continually dropping. And last week, it even closed out with this uh, magenta candle. So I've got to wait and see how this weekly candle is going to play out over the week. But overall, like I said, this one hour time frame, breakout, retest, continuation looks fine. Let me see what the two hour looks like. I'm just curious. Oh yeah, it's not there yet, but it's setting up for a potential buy. So yeah, there you go. I'm still in the buy and I'm going to just hold it. All right, let's look at S&P. Mr. S&P, this was so clean. Super clean. I said I was waiting for it. I'm playing out the play. Stop losses that break even. Take partial profits right here. And I personally think that this might, if, wait, actually, let me leave that right there. Because this is a very much, although I doubt it, this is a very high possibility that price could literally from this drop stay right here and then continue dropping. I personally doubt that. I'm still holding this trade, but this is the possibility. I want I like I like mapping out all possibilities regardless. And if I'm already in a trade, then I would be like, "Oh, well then hey, maybe I could get into uh maybe I could get into a hedge on this sell, but I personally do not want to hedge this because overall this is in a crazy uptrend. And I do know that my boy Peyton, he has his um, VIX that he looks at. And if it's 
and currently it's still showing him that it's this could be bearish but this is just making higher highs on a daily time frame so i'm just questioning how long until this uptrend is going to last because if a draw if a if a downtrend starts it's going to be a bloodbath basically so we're going to wait and see what happens like i said you could definitely see an opportunity on a sell on the lower time frames but do you really want to go up against this higher time frame move is the question that you want to ask yourself because it did really come in wick 78.6 and now it's making it Ooh, that was weird and now it's making its way to the upside so really got to wait and see what s p does if you're looking for the sells but as for me i'm just in the buys and i'm sticking to them um arbitrage starting to call for a buy on the four hour time frame not quite there yet the one hour yeesh it said i'm not even going to give you a chance <laughs> for me at least daily time frame Ooh, hold up. Okay, if if the daily time frame closes with this, I'm closing with my profits, and I'm gonna be like, yo, I need to probably get into this sell. Now, I don't like how this last sell played out, but the previous ones played out pretty nicely. Broke out, retested, and continued to the downside. Didn't hit the TP that I would have taken it at, but it would have I would have still taken at least eighty percent. So I've got to see how this S and P plays out. This could be definitely a sign that this is going to drop. Who knows? Um, also, this weekly definitely super bullish. So, not really going to look at the weekly, but the daily time frame, it could be potential. Who knows? Got to wait and see how the daily candle closes before I make a decision. I might hedge this. I might actually hedge. I was just talking about it. <laughs> so, let's see. All right. Um, Dow Jones. I don't know why that's not green. Dow Jones play my life, you know, per usual. And it definitely came and hit my buy box, but only at the 61.8 and then pushed to the upside. Um, I would have taken 70% profits by now. Um, still possible for it to go to the upside. It's clearly making higher highs, like, clearly. So, until it, until it really breaks... Until it really breaks to 9656.5, I can't say that it's, I'm looking for the bearish move on it. But you can also say that from this, let me go ahead and actually get rid of this Fibonacci real quick. You can say that from this bearish move, price is right at the 71%. So it could be a potential sell, but overall, it's making higher highs. So... Tread lightly, but I'm pretty sure there's a, quite a few people who might be looking for sales right now, to be quite honest. Because if you're catching a sell from here, and it's an actual bloodbath, then that would be very, you'd be very profitable. Your risk to reward, let's see. Because if this sells, then I'll take this to the grave. Your risk to reward on this type of trade. Would be astounding. Actually, I might. Actually, if it breaks this low right here, then who knows? It could possibly come down over here. The risk to reward could be crazy if you're if you're really down like that. Seven to one, a one to seven. Nah, no one's down to do that. If you're if you're down, then hey, I just gave you an idea. Price can come down and make equal lows right here, um, stop people out, and then continue to the upside. Risk to reward even on this is a one to four, so that's pretty nice. I like that risk to reward as as well. So, yeah, make your decision. You could definitely look to sell here, but just remember, it bounced off this buy box and it's in an uptrend. So, tread lightly. I look at Mr. Nas, although I'm taking this trade by the way. I'm gonna risk 0.5 percent of my account. Um. Mr. Nas, I really wanted it to drop down lower. Actually, I don't think I'm going to take that trade because this looks like it just stopped on it. Like, look at this four-hour candle right here itself. Let me see what the volume was looking at that. It's crazy volume. Yep. Mm-hmm. This looks like a stop on to me. It looks like this is pushing to the upside. Yeah, I wouldn't be... I would, I'm not super against this entry that where price is at right now for you to get into a buy at this moment. But I would rather, for sure, you know, you know how I am. 
get my 1.2380 entry and then continue to the upside that's how i would look at i would look to get into the entry but it's not bad where it's at either because you could literally play it out like this at current price I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of these, and if price does drop down there, then hey, I'll map it back out and we can look to trade it. But yeah, even if you were to get in at this price, if you're looking for NASDAQ to make higher highs as well, even with this, your risk to reward is a one to two, but on the daily time frame. I don't know why it doesn't make me stretch that out anymore. It's weird. If you're making, if you're looking for this to give you higher highs, from here. Dang, it really did do that. Wow. I didn't. I did not pay attention to that last week. I think. Did I even spot that? Hold on. I keep getting really chill. So you not be relaxing. Wow. I did not spot this at all. But it, and anyways. Even this type of entry right here is not terrible for a swing trade. It's a one to, well, if I think if it's personally gonna make higher highs and it come up here easily, that's still a one to four right there. So it's not a bad entry, but I would have loved right here instead. Oh my goodness, man. I really can't believe I didn't see this. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my previous analysis on this to see if I didn't see this. Cause if I was really, blind to this i'm gonna be mad at myself well so yeah we'll see what this does i i this is not a bad entry like like i said and even with the u the us 30 to dow jones that i gave this is really risky i'm only being i'm only putting 0.5 percent on this but i'm gonna risk one percent on this maybe put it a little lower just in case even it's still a 1.392 risk to reward. So I'm getting into this, getting into that. <laughs> Let's see what happens. All right, Bitcoin. Yeah. I'm so mad because the entry that I wanted again, <laughs> Bitcoin did it again to me, guys. Wow. I had I had played I had set this up. I'm like, oh, is this playing out? And it's playing out for the 61.8. So. I'm speechless but yeah I just see it continuing to the upside honestly it's all I really I don't see it slowing down it could stop right here it could literally relax right here grab some liquidity as per usual I don't like how these are so big though oh wrong one why can't they just stay the size? I'll make a template and make them small. But anyways, so yeah, I would love for a price to probably just come and swoop this up, then drop. But then, no, if it did that, then it, it already basically hit where I had to take 70% of this profit from this buy. So if even if it does come up there, it's probably, and it drops, then it's probably gonna drop hard if it drops but i don't see it dropping i mean i don't again i don't see it dropping um let's see from this drop that it did though yeah i could definitely look to sell at fifty three thousand nine hundred eighty one. i'll check back at on bitcoin once it does that because it could definitely do that yeah yeah i know i don't care so i'm watching bitcoin for a potential sell but it's gonna be a very risky sell it's only gonna be like a 0.5 percent risk type of, type of trade um ripple i just see it continue i it's the same analysis if you want to take a buy go ahead but i don't want to give you guys a bad entry i'm not looking at any entries for um ripple right now same thing with litecoin it's just things are already go, they're already playing out so i can't give you guys i don't like to give entries on these unless for sales and ethereum is just going to work man 
But again, hey, I gave you guys the play for the buys. You could have played them out. I'm the one that's having to see them play out nicely, and I didn't get in them, you know? So it is what it is. But is there any other pairs that anybody wants me to take a look at? <laughs> These cryptos hurt me, man. This is where PTSD comes from. <laughs> nothing all right guys well thank you i appreciate you guys for hopping on i will be playing up i would be setting up the playback very shortly and i hope you guys have a good weekend i'm gonna go check out the all-star game